Welcome! This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 21st of July 2011. Today marks the end of the Space Shuttle program, with the landing of the last Space Shuttle at the Kennedy Space Center. So today's trivia question is, what's the name of the shuttle that flew this last mission? The answer will be given at the end. From the GOES X-ray plot we can see that solar conditions have remained very quiet over the last 24 hours, with a few minor B flares. So once again we would expect there to be very little activity as far as new sunspot regions are concerned. And when we look at the sunspot pictures, we see that that is indeed the case. We now only have three numbered regions on the disk. Region 1251 is a single large spot and is very stable and will not give us very much activity. Region 1254 has continued its slow growth and has actually been responsible for most of the minor B flares that we've had. Region 1250 is a moderate sized region that is not changing a great deal, so we wouldn't expect very much activity out of that either. When we look at the sunspots and magnetic field in movie form from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, we can see this decay going on. Regions are getting more diffuse and weaker, and that is the exact reverse of what we need if we want to see flares. Notice in the region that corresponds to where the coronal hole is, the magnetic field is all of one polarity. This is why it is open field and the solar wind can flow out of there because it is not connecting back locally to the sun. Unfortunately, the AIA instrument is doing calibration slews again, so we are not getting very much useful data. In the transition region movie, you can see a few prominences and filaments lift off, but they're not particularly large and so nothing to get excited about from a coronal mass ejection point of view. In both the high temperature and low temperature coronal movies, you can, despite all the moving around, you can see that there is very little coming over the east limb, as indeed we predicted yesterday. The coronal hole in the southwest is now moving towards the limb, and so its influence should start to wane with the Earth, and I, think, and I think we're beginning to see that in the geospace data. SOHO is still having software problems, so it, the data there is almost unusable but there was just a few frames where you could see that there was a fairly large coronal mass ejection off the north limb, probably from behind the sun. I speculate that it may have come from that prominence that was uh, on the northwest limb a few days ago that I was expecting to erupt. From ACE we see that the temperature of the solar wind has been remained relatively constant for the last 24 hours, though the density has dropped a little. However, the speed ramped up for most of that period, reaching a peak of about 750 kilometers per second, and is now easing off a little bit. The high energy electron flux has ramped up quite significantly over the last 48 hours, probably due to the presence of this high speed solar wind stream. As we've had no major flares, the proton flux remains at base levels. The auroral zones seem mildly agitated, and we've had fairly uh, unsettled conditions in the KP index, ranging in value between 3 and 4. So in summary then, the X-ray background has remained at the B2 level, the sunspot number has fallen to 79. Radio sun intensity remains at 100 solar flux units. Solar wind speed increased to 665 km per second, even at times reaching 750 km per second, with a density of 3 protons per cubic centimeter. And geospace conditions are considered unsettled at the moment. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is we have got a poor chance of C flares, but a very remote chance of getting M or X flares. Sunspot numbers should drift lower. We still have a good chance of coronal mass ejections. The solar wind speed should start easing back down to more normal velocities in the next day or two. Geomagnetic conditions should remain unsettled, but we're unlikely to get a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours. In the longer term, we do not expect a new region to come over the east limb for the next two or three days. So once again, we're going to rely on our existing regions to give us uh, new levels of activity or hope that a new region pops up on the visible surface of the sun. Our answer to today's trivia question is that Atlantis flew the last shuttle mission. Now fair warning, several of you asked for this so now you're going to get it. Many years ago I was the candidate for a mission specialist on the space shuttle and of course they took the obligatory picture of uh, us all standing next to a model of the space shuttle and so this is me 35 years ago as a payload specialist candidate. I was one of 10 finalists and of course I didn't make it to be Pedro Specialist on the Space Lab 2 mission. The reason why I wasn't finally selected was that I was too young, which is one of the reasons why I grew that dreadful moustache in order to look older. By the day after the selection, that moustache had gone, much to my fiancé's and current wife's delight, I might add. I do have the distinction amongst payload specialist candidates of being the only person to break the strength machine and to fall asleep in the stress machine, but they assure me that that didn't affect the selection process. 
So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.